Hi, it's Alex Gosper at the American River for another SACTV.com Riverside Chat. Today I want to talk about how nature is all around us, yet it's so hard to find for, for many people. And that ties into the food we eat. This is a tough topic because a lot of people are, um, their number one religion is food. You know, some people might have other things on their list and rank it differently, but food's way on top of most people's list. So, uh, that being the case, it raises the question, why do we eat food? And, of course, the, the real answer, the honest answer, is to give us energy so we can survive. However, in the commercial pop culture world, which has only really existed since the 1920s, when you think about how all this industrialization, you know, machinery to create food processing, and um, just, you know, inventions like uh, that promote things like, uh, you know, media is, is, is electronic media is kind of what gets people interested in different types of food. You know, before the 1920s, people kind of just ate what was locally grown or um, available to them, uh, you know, in, in small stores. Like, there weren't huge supermarkets till the 1920s. So anyway, one of the things that TV, movies, and big media does is it makes junk food popular doesn't do much about health food because see it's it's all about the sponsors and it's easier to be a big big sponsor of junk food than it is to be a big big sponsor of health food uh, health food costs more to produce in many ways although if you just stick with the basics like um, fruits and veggies you know stuff that isn't that processed um, you're actually doing better than someone eating any kind of processed food. So I try to keep that in mind, that processed food is kind of the worst food you can eat, and that's food made by machines, or in a lab, or food that uh, is just mass produced through some chemical process. Uh, <clears throat> that's all crap, man. I don't need chemicals in my food. so. That's why I, I mainly stick with organic food. I do cheat a little bit going to restaurants here and there. And, and if the restaurant doesn't promote the word organic, chances are they're not. And if they're not organic, that means they're mixing in all kinds of pesticides and chemicals and bad stuff your body doesn't really want. But see, your mind doesn't know this if you're not reminded of this constantly. And you're not reminded of it constantly by big dumb media because is it to their advantage to promote good health? No, it's th to their advantage to promote the products that their sponsors want them to promote. And that tends to be big, 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 big industrial companies that mass produce food with machines and all kinds of chemicals just uh, really bad stuff, petrochemicals and glyphosate, stuff linked to cancer. And then they don't want you to know about the tests that show that the, there are links to cancer. So big dumb media chooses not to tell you about the test. And for a while they used to, like in the 80s and 90s, they'd say, well, a study now says this, this kind of food's bad for you, you know, this, this breakfast cereal crap. Um, <laughs> and then the sugar industry would come up with their own study, their own limited study, that would, that would counter that and say, no, it turns out it's good for you after all. So this is how you know the difference between good studies and bad studies. Uh, good studies are large independent studies funded by organizations that have no, um, <clears throat> have no investment in the outcome of it. All they want to know is, is, is this food healthy or unhealthy? Okay, these are like medical and scientific people who care about science. Okay, there's those kind of studies which definitely don't get a lot of press. <laughs> They're overshadowed by the corporate studies 
like a big brand, a big lousy cookie brand makes their own garbage with high fructose corn syrup, you know, fake sugar mixed with all kinds of petrochemicals that cause cancer, you know, food coloring, artificial flavors, artificial colors, all that crap is linked to cancer. But they don't want to promote that or tell you that. They, they just want to tell you that, um, hey, it tastes good. So that's what they learned in the 1920s. People will gravitate to what tastes good because that's the immediate pleasure center of the mind is taste. If it tastes good, it must be good. And uh, that's how they trick you with taste buds. First, they um, trick you into fast food, soft drinks, and that kind of trash, processed foods. All what a doctor would tell you is unhealthy. I, I challenge anyone to find a real doctor who's actually studied medicine and nutrition uh, who will recommend junk food as a regular diet. That means all these fast food garbage places, okay? Now, not all fast food is terrible for you and it's not gonna kill you in one day. That's why people keep going back to it. They figure, oh, it didn't kill me today, so I'll eat it again and it won't kill me tomorrow. The thing is, if that's all you're eating is fast food, you're wrecking your insides. <laughs> Your body really doesn't like that fast food trash, no matter how much your taste buds and your brainwashed brain tells you that it's good. So that leads up to this story. You know, Arden Way, I've, I've lived off and on near Arden Way uh, for many, many decades. I <laughs> uh, grew up in the area, moved back to the area, um, but I've also lived in a lot of other places. But I like the river, the American River. That's why I keep coming back to this neighborhood, uh, like the Arden Arcade area of Sacramento. I like it because it's, uh, it's real, this area right here is very peaceful. Arden Way is really busy though. And what I like about Arden Way is it's, it's kind of, it gives you a little snapshot of American pop culture. Now, it used to be back in the 80s that it was a lot of mom and pop shops on Arden Way. There was pizza and pipes. Was a, they had pipe organs in there and a pipe organ player while they made pizza. Family business. They had lots of family businesses. Like, I, I worked at a roller rink on Arden Way that was a family business. So I worked at King Skate Country on Arden Way, a, a family business. And it was fun, it paid minimum wage, but it's where I got my first like DJ experience, at least on a regular daily basis. And um, you know, that eventually led to a radio career that I'm very happy and proud of. I'm not in radio anymore, it's a broken down business uh, because the greedy people took over and ruined it. Uh, stock prices went from sky high to the sewer. Um, so only a handful of people make money in radio anymore. But in the 90s, it was a really good business. Um, till yeah, Big Biz ruined it. Um, Big Biz ruins a lot of businesses. They ruin the restaurant business in many ways because now it's just, you go down Arden Way and it's like a lot of fast food restaurants. You know, um, Right in front of the roller rink where I used to work, there used to be like a family restaurant called Sam's. And it was kind of like a, it might have been a burger place. I don't remember eating there much. I eventually hated burgers and stopped eating them once I learned about nutrition. So for the longest time, that place that used to be Sam's, it became Burger King, which is an international brand. And then I... I hated Burger King. I never ate there. I, it's like I don't eat at McDonald's or any of those, those crappy burger places that fill their food with chemicals your body doesn't want. Maybe your dumb brainwashed brain thinks it tastes good. That's what they learn from brainwashing and the, you know, consumer uh, persuasion uh, studies from way back. So. This place that used to be Burger, one day Burger King just disappears. 
Um, of course, the company still exists, but that particular store went out of business. They, they moved to some other location. For, for whatever reason, Arden and Watt, a very busy intersection, just wasn't happening for this popular international brand. Uh, could be that people be, were becoming more health conscious, but then across the street was McDonald's, which that's the number one junk food brand, so that has managed to stay in business with their value meals and all kinds of marketing gimmicks that lure people in. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, Burger King disappears and I'm celebrating, I'm thinking, gee, maybe something good will take its place, like a, you know, organic food restaurant maybe there aren't too many of those by comparison to the junk food chains but i was hoping had my fingers crossed and then one day suddenly there's this new brand i had never heard of uh it became dave's hot chicken okay so i'm like wow that's that i never heard of that before plus it sounds really bland and boring you know dave's hot chicken it just sounds generic and weak. And, and the, their logo is a picture of a scared looking chicken. But it's like a really dumb, like one dimensional, like, uh, like a one dimensional, easy to draw, sketchy cartoon of a chicken. Like, like I could have drawn that. I'm an artist and I, I take pride in a lot of the stuff I do. Uh, some of it imitates life. Some of it's just abstract. Some of it's, um, you know, whatever art I'm trying to create. But um, I couldn't believe that this bland, super corporate looking logo was the thing. And somehow, uh, that, that, that someone would invest money. First, I thought it was just a one a one off company. Then I did some research and found out, oh, there's 200 of these things around the United States called Dave's Hot Chicken. Chicken, man. And the word hot, Dave's Hot Chicken. Okay. The word hot becomes a euphemism for fried. Okay, that's what they sell is fried chicken. Notice how KFC, it used to be Kentucky Fried Chicken, and then when fry became a bad word, it became KFC. <laughs> and that, that's true of a lot of chicken places. Um, they stopped using the word fried in their marketing because it just became a bad word. It, it became linked to poor health and cancer and stuff like that. Fried foods increases the risk of cancer. Okay, there's lots of independent studies that show that. There might be some corporate small studies that refute that by the brands that are trying to sell you their trash. Um, but that's, that's what the media reports on, what the brands are telling you, that their studies, their in-house small studies show that this stuff's good for you, man. Um, anyway, Big dumb media will never teach you about health food um, unless radical changes take place someday. <laughs> In the meantime, they're promoting this unhealthy, horrible stuff that leads to all kinds of health problems that lead to people taking all kinds of pharma drugs, which adds to the problems because pharma drugs have side effects. Okay, you, the human body doesn't want any of these pharma drugs in their system. Okay, the human body has a built-in immune system that takes care of a lot of stuff if you don't destroy it with junk food and lack of exercise, which is what TV and movies uh, promote, is lack of exercise and to consume uh, whatever trash you think is tasty instead of what's healthy, it's what's tasty is what they're trying to sell you. So Dave's hot chicken, I'm wondering, oh, is there anything healthy about this? And at first, I, you know, I'm, I'm just turned off by the whole marketing concept of the whole thing. And then I learn, um, okay, one day, one day they changed the sign to Dave's Not Chicken. Huh? One day it's called Dave's Hot Chicken, and the next day it's Dave's Not Chicken. And my first impression was actually 
their worst nightmare, um, the owners of that chain. Um, my first impression was, oh, they're telling us it's fake chicken, that this isn't authentic chicken after all. This is just some kind of weird garbage masqueraded as chicken that tastes like chicken. That was my first impression of Dave's Not Chicken. And then I learned from a clip, uh, Kitty O'Neill, who I like, a, a media person here in Sacramento who I've interviewed. Um, she explained that uh, it was part of a marketing stunt, I guess, um, to market a, a new menu item they had, which was uh, something that was not chicken, but was supposed to be healthy and that was um, fried cauliflower okay now cauliflower raw is really healthy okay <laughs> it's it's one of the healthiest foods on the planet okay i love cauliflower um and, and it's got a really mild taste to it so it, it's something you can eat without worrying if it's you know tasting bland or bad no no it's kind of mild and it does have kind of a nice taste to it um, but when you fry it you can actually burn out all the nutrients and you can um, add calories and add fat and so that's that's just unhealthy and that's what they're trying to sell as their healthy menu item is Dave's not chicken is like fried um, Fried health food turns it into just regular junk food. But they're not even marketing it as a health thing anyway. They're marketing it as taste. Ooh, it tastes good. It's crunchy. You, you watch their commercials, and I've done this as part of my study on pop culture. And um, they're just trying to make you think it's super tasty food, and it's irresistible so much that you got to line up for this food these buckets of chicken hot fried chicken that because it's crunchy and tasty some kind of sauce is on it that makes it taste good probably has all kinds of artificial flavors and all that chemical crap in it to make you think that they can take the worst chemicals on the planet and turn it into making it tasty food and that's what, exactly what happens with junk food junk food, fast food, processed food. It's all trash, okay? Promoted heavily by big dumb media and in a way the FDA approves of all this trash, this cancer causing, health destroying trash. And then there, the other side of the FDA is the drugs, you know, big pharma, the greediest industry on the planet. The, industry that's constantly thinking up new diseases so they can market new drugs okay that's exactly what they're doing they got a, they're coming up with a long list of ailments that aren't necessarily anything bad but they're trying to make it sound bad so that you, so that they can scare you into buying more drugs drugs on top of drugs equals unhealthy situation so um that's where that's where pop culture's taking us on a big ride uh, to hell and back. <laughs> For some people, they aren't coming back though. Okay, it's just dumb, lousy products that the body doesn't need, and they're just gonna push it on you. And they're gonna do it with pop stars. Like, turns out Drake, the pop singer, Drake, rapper, whatever. He, uh, he's on top of the pop charts all the time in this era. Uh, he's promoting, he's investing in Dave's Hot Chicken. So that, that association makes him a brand ambassador. And so people who like Drake might think, oh, well, Drake, he's cool, man. He's hip. Remember, hip doesn't mean smart. It just means going along with the dumb crowd. And uh, so that's what's happening. Uh, not taken away from his, you know, integrity or talent or anything. Uh, obviously, he sold a lot of records that has a, he's got a legit career in music. But then when he uses that to promote junk food, wow. I, I really think people need to start thinking about what they put into their bodies as an investment. An investment in good 
food, an investment in healthy food is an investment in good health. I eat well, I eat healthy, I eat fruits and vegetables. That's like 75% of my diet. I'm not anti-meat, anti-chicken or any of that. I do eat some of it sometimes, but it's, it's more in diminishing qualities, quantities, and uh, I, I do favor fruits and vegetables and nuts more and more as time goes on. Um, I definitely avoid the uh, fast food, junk food diet, which is burgers, fries, and soda. All crap mixed with dumb chemicals on purpose because the, the addictive crap they put in there, that's like drugs um, that aren't, aren't, necessarily, aren't necessarily categorized as drugs by the FDA, but that's what they do. They alter your body chemistry. They mess with all kinds of body organs and then people wonder why they have bad health. You know, if pharma was doing its job and helping people, wouldn't it eventually make everyone healthy then put itself out of business? No, instead, they're coming up with new drugs all the time and new reasons to take drugs and, and all the drugs are getting more and more expensive and it's part of corporate price gouging. They're just there to move money from the middle class on down to the upper class on up. What's good for the planet would be if we were all helping each other instead of all being brainwashed by this big machine that is sucking money out of all of us and making people unhealthy by sitting there for hours and hours and hours, which is like one of the most unhealthy things you can do is just sit and not move your limbs, not exercise. I, I get exercise uh, every day and I um, eat good food every day Hemp seeds have been healthy all along. I sprinkle it on almost everything I eat and it, that helps. You'll never hear big dumb media tell you to do that though, will they? So that's what pop culture is all about. Sorry if it wasn't what you wanted to hear. I just like, I just like sharing my research. I'm a writer, okay? I've researched a lot of industries. I've learned what they do, how they exploit markets, okay? And I'm just trying to share some of that. And I'm trying to hopefully encourage and inspire others to think more about nature. Nature gives us lots of solutions we overlook thanks to big dumb media.